Aloha and welcome to All About Adoption. My name is Christine Altries. I'm the Executive Director at Hawaii International Child. And with me today is a very special guest, William Fritz. Hello, William. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here. Great. Yeah. So today's episode we called um, Out of Baku or Born in Baku yes. um, because yeah. you were born in Baku, Azerbaijan. Yes. So I was born uh, there. Um, my parents were actually refugees. So they went there, we think, and then they, because they were fleeing from a war. And I think I was born there six months, or I was adopted six months. So you were six months old when you were adopted yes. by your mom and dad who live in Hawaii. Yes. Lived in Hawaii, and this is where you were raised? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm 16 years old, mm -hmm. and I lived here for 15 years. Okay. And, yeah. So it's, is it unusual to have information about your birth family? You have, it seems like a little bit of information about who your birth parents were and what was going on with them. I have, I don't really have that much information on them. Mm -hmm. It's not really a topic I think about. I don't, um, sometimes I don't even know I'm adopted. Uh, it's, I think it was a closed adoption. So, and I never really thought about contacting them, but What's it called? It's so part of me that I like to hold on to, because it is like my roots are there in a way, if you could say. Mm -hmm. Does that yeah. give you a sense of comfort knowing that, or does it agitate you at all? Um, I don't really care. Uh, I think um, wherever you come from, that could be like, I can't explain it. It's just a feeling of feeling like I know that there's more to me, mm -hmm. and it's interesting because I feel like I can always explore and there's new depths to see about me that I never knew. Mm -hmm. So yeah. If you had the time or interest. Yeah, if I had the time or interest. Okay. I always have the option, and it's interesting because there's a bunch of um, genetic. Because I didn't know where I was, like what ethnics I am, and it's fun to when me and my mom, we did a uh, ethnic test, and it was fun because we were laughing and looking at all the new things that um, that I was like Asian and all these other ethnic groups. So that's super fun. So you did something like Ancestry.com? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And what did you discover? Um, I'm 80% white, Caucasian from Europe, 17% Asian, and Neanderthal. Wow. Yes. Ah, interesting. Yeah. My mom makes fun of me because of the Neanderthal. The Neanderthal. Yeah, when you're misbehaving, she calls you a Neanderthal. Exactly, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's yeah. convenient. <laughs> okay, that's pretty true, I guess. Um, so Azerbaijan, most people probably have never heard of it. Yes. Don't know where it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's a Caucasus country, yes. right? So um, can you say a little bit about Azerbaijan? Well, it's located near Russia, actually mm -hmm. under Russia. Mm -hmm. I think it's by the Caspian Sea. Mm -hmm. And they call themselves the Land of Fire. And the country is a small country. No one really knows of it. It used to be part of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. And the uh, main city, the capital, is named Baku, where mm -hmm. I was born. Mm -hmm. So that's the small information I know about it. And I actually was interested, so I looked up the language of it before. Mm -hmm. And I tried to learn that for a while. And? Uh, it was hard. It's hard, but right? But yeah, yeah. Right, it's definitely. a Slavic language. Mm -hmm. So it's, does it, is it use Cyrillic? Is that the alphabet? Is the Cyril, Cyrillic alphabet similar to Russian? Or is it more like Georgian, more Persian? I'm not exactly sure. I kind of just looked up videos on like people speaking it, uh -huh. and then I would try to repeat what they said. And it was hard. It was hard. Yeah. I, Maybe I, later on. You right. When I yeah. When you're in college or something. Yeah. Okay. So you're from Azerbaijan, a small country, a very important country culturally, mm -hmm. historically, um, a beautiful country. Baku yeah. is a gorgeous city. Used to be a, a very important city. Uh, in the Soviet Union and before that, mm -hmm. um, but you haven't been back? No, uh, I asked my mom if I could go back and she said when I'm 18, just because of the hassle. It's like four plane flights from Hawaii yeah. and it's just a huge like hassle and it's, my mom said it wasn't really a place she liked to visit because there was um, poverty and it was, not that it was bad that it was poverty, it was just a very um, 
let me explain this in the right term. It was, it was hard because when she visited, she didn't really uh, know the language and people right. were rude and it wasn't like what she expected. Right. So I think when I'm 18, I want to go there with a couple of friends and see what it's like. Mm -hmm. um, I heard the city is progressing more, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. She's, like, I don't really know what's going to happen when I visit. Sure. And they're actually in war right now, so mm. I can't go anytime soon. So do you yeah. follow what's going on in Azerbaijan as a 16-year-old living in Hawaii? Um, I occasionally look up the news on there, but mm -hmm. not frequently. Maybe once or twice mm -hmm. every four or five months. Mm -hmm. And um, just the big things like, oh, a war is happening or like, crises or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I like to catch up on because it's very interesting to yeah. me. So do yeah. you feel connected to Azerbaijan even though you left when you were six months old? Um, I think I have this feeling of when I think about Azerbaijan, it makes me curious. So in a connection of a way of feeling like this, like Hawaii is my home. I call this place my home, but I always have that place too. It's always like, I feel like it would be a safe place to go for me. Even if I don't have any connection or I don't know the language or I don't know anyone, mm -hmm. I just feel like I can always go back and mm -hmm. it feel like home as well. That's yeah. interesting. I think people watching are curious because if you weren't adopted yourself, then you may be wondering, what does it feel like to be adopted? What does it feel like mm -hmm. to, to be born in one place and to move halfway across the world and be raised in another place? Is that a scary feeling? Is that something that you live with on a daily basis? Is mm -hmm. that something that you only occasionally think about it? Does it, as you just said, provide you with a little bit of comfort? Because mm -hmm. you know that instead of having one home, you have two yeah. possible homes yeah. that you, where you could feel comfortable. Um, going across, you know, because Azerbaijan is super far away, mm -hmm. I don't really know that I'm adopted. Like, I know that I'm adopted because people tell me, but it doesn't feel like that because my mom raised me. She was the one who took care of me. She dealt with the diapers. She dealt with all of that. And of course, Azerbaijan, like you said, or I said, is very comforting to me. Mm -hmm. The feeling of going across the world doesn't faze me, mm -hmm. really. It's just something that ha happened, mm -hmm. and it happened to me, but it doesn't, I don't think of it as often as some people might think. Okay, so that's interesting, I think, to viewers is, what does it feel like? How often do you think about it? You mm -hmm. said you forget that you're adopted. Yes. Or it's not something that you think about very yes. often. Was there a moment in your life that you can share with us where it became very apparent to you or maybe something happened where you had to face the fact that you were adopted? And it, if so, was it a comfortable moment? Was it uncomfortable? How did you deal with it? Do you have a specific memory around realizing that you are adopted? I don't have an exact memory of being, like, knowing that I was adopted because I think from, since my mom got me, she'd been telling me mm -hmm. that I was and my dad. So it hasn't been something that it was one moment it hit and I, like, realized it because my whole life I always thought I was adopted. Mm -hmm. Or I, I knew it. It's not like any part I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a moment once where I wanted a connection back to Azerbaijan. It, I think it was after my dad passed away because I felt like I wanted more comfort or mm -hmm. I wish there was like more people that I could talk to. Mm -hmm. So I wanted like brothers and sisters and I wanted to like have a different life mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a hard moment for me and my mom because um, it's understandable that I felt that way because I just wanted to escape where I was. But at the same time, um, even if I did find my family at any point, it's not like I would have a connection to them. Uh, through a sense of blood. But there's a saying, you know, blood is thicker than water. And I don't necessarily believe in that mm -hmm. because I think family is the people who raised you and the people who care for you. Mm -hmm. I have friends and I call them my family. Mm -hmm. So I did have one moment of absence, like I needed to be with them, mm -hmm. but it was just one time. How old were you when you experienced that feeling? Um, 14, because my dad passed away when I was nine and I didn't know that he passed away. Like. You know, I've ha he passed away, but it didn't like realize until I reached 14 years old, and then I finally hit, like that hit me, mm -hmm. and I had that moment. And you know, my mom had a struggling time, and it was usually like it was it lasted a week, I think. A or, week. Well, okay. it last. It happened like a day, like that. I felt like that, 
but me and my mom were like trying to get back from it because it was just a hard part mm. and it, I just felt like that there's a whole another part of me that was missing mm -hmm. but I don't know why I felt like that it was just emotions I think so your father passed away when you mm -hmm. were nine here in Hawaii and just to be clear you you knew he had passed away mm -hmm. it was very obvious to yes. you that he had died um, and you spent five years maybe processing it, mm -hmm. and when you were 14, you had an experience of it really hitting you hard. Yeah. And at that moment, yes. you started grasping and looking for other things to hold on to. Trying to yes. right, okay. Makes and that's sense. the first thing that I grabbed onto. Interesting. Yes. And how wonderful for you that you have a great relationship with your mother. Mm -hmm. It sounds like where the two of you can talk about anything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, the death of my father brought me and my mom really close. I. There's not no secret that I hide from her. She knows everything about me, and I don't know if I know everything about her. Hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully <laughs> not, right? But I do have a really strong connection with her, and I feel comfortable around her. And at one point, we were worried, or we were that um, I had too strong connection to her, that I didn't have anyone else to talk to. Like I said, um, but I do. I have friends that I talk to, mm -hmm. and even if my mom and our our friendship, or not friendship, our relationship is really strong. I always have other people there. Mm -hmm. But being adopted hasn't affected our relationship at all. Mm -hmm. She's still my mother, and um, I don't know. I couldn't ask for a better mom. Better mom. Oh, that's so. probably really nice for her to hear. Yeah. That's what every parent dreams of hearing. Yes. Um, and, and you feel, even with that, that you are um, comfortable talking about and exploring the concept of birth family. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, if I ever asked my mom about being adopted, she would totally tell me everything that she knew. She even um, let me go into like the safe and look at all my birth name and all the other things. Um, I found out my mother's name. I found out all these other things. She helped me look them up. Mm -hmm. So she's been very supportive through mm -hmm. all this. And it's not a struggle. It's more of an adventure mm -hmm. of being adopted. That's a great yes. way to look at it. Yeah. For people who are considering adoption, who are worried about presenting their children with um, the idea of openness in adoption or mm -hmm. multiple cultures, um, you may come from one culture, the culture you were born into, but when you enter our new family, you adopt our culture also. Some parents may be concerned about presenting too many concepts to their children or too many family ideas, what would you say about what it's been like to be raised with the idea that you are part of this Hawaiian ohana, mm -hmm. you were raised here, you feel at home here, but you also have not quite a whole foot in, but you have part of you left back yes. in Azerbaijan. How has that been growing up, sort of straddling that emotionally or culturally in your mind? Um, it's interesting. I usually have, uh, when people ask me if I'm where I'm from, I usually say Azerbaijan, and I get the weirdest response, like you're not American, and things that you're not a citizen, and that has kind of affected me culturally, because sometimes it made me think like, I am, because I wrote, raised here, and I rem every memory I have is being in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So culturally, it didn't really affect me. It was more of um, other people, in a way, mm. um, dealing with it because I never had a problem dealing with it. And it's interesting having that connection to Azerbaijan. It's like um, a dream. Like Azerbaijan's like a dream. It's like, it feels real, but it's not really. Like I know it's there. Like I know it. Like it's always there, but it doesn't feel like it's reality. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. That makes sense. So it feels, yeah. It's a complex concept for a 16-year-old, but you've obviously dealt with it your whole life. Yeah. It sounds like you've been processing it and thinking about where you fit in and how you fit in and mm -hmm. who you are. Yeah. Um, I never... Well, people ask me, like, what's it like being adopted, like, on the show? People ask, oh, you're asking me, what's yeah. it like? And I don't think it's really something that's... It's what's it like. It's more of what I grew up with. It's... Like, people grow up not being adopted, and no one asks them, what's it like not being adopted? Because you grew up with it. There's no really difference. So I wouldn't know what it would be like not having these two cultures in my life. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it affected me, or it could have affected me, but I don't think 
I would notice it because I don't know what it's like without it. That's a great. That's a great thing to think about. Is if it's all you've ever known, yes. And to ask you what it would feel like to not know it is kind of Ugh. silly. Yeah. Because you've known it and you've dealt with it. Mm-hmm. And it's not really, um, like I said, it's not a struggle. It's more of just a lifestyle, mm-hmm. and it's it's more of who I am. And it's nice to always have um, that saying of like, "This is who I am," mm-hmm. and you get to like stand out. I don't really think of myself mm-hmm. different. Because people, they think people who are adopted are different because mm-hmm. they're not um, blood related to their parents. But I think as mm-hmm. myself as everyone else, I don't think I'm different. I think uh, I fit in. I mm-hmm. think this part of me is, is, it could be different, but I don't feel like it is. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. Do you think that has anything to do with how your mom raised you? Do you think that has to do with who you are innately? Your constitution is one of someone who's resilient and who just sort of accepts everything that comes your way. Did you ever have any struggles around wondering who you are and why this happened to you, or has it always been so easy? Um, My mom and my dad both raised me to kind of accept what happened and to be thankful, because there's always people out there who have harder lives. Mm -hmm. So I always grew up knowing that I am privileged in my way, and that I uh, accept what happened. Mm-hmm. And it, except for that one struggle that happened uh, when I was 14 because of the loss of my father, I don't think it has really been hard. I think it's just, I don't know, it's nice. Mm-hmm. I like it. It's like a comfort feeling. So you see it as an enhancement to yes, your life, I, as a gift almost. Yes, as an um, advantage of mm-hmm. if you, I don't know, because it's nice when you tell someone you're Azer- from Azerbaijan or wherever you're adopted from and they're interested in it, you can tell them a part of yourself that other people can't tell. Mm-hmm. Like everyone can tell their ethnic or their parents or whatever, but it's interesting when you tell people about being adopted because lots of people don't know what that's like. So. What would you say to people who have information about their child's birth parent that they don't want to share with their child because they don't want to burden the child with that knowledge? Oh, okay. So they don't want their child to feel out of place. Or in your case, when you mentioned early on that you know that your birth parents were refugees, Mm -hmm. um, some parents might say, I don't want my child to to worry about his birth parents, Uh or I don't want my child to think that his birth parents weren't, you know, I don't know, successful, you know, long time members of a particular society, that they were on the run, that they had hardship. Mm -hmm. Do you think that any of those thoughts or that knowledge about your birth family, I can't ask you if it's affected you because you just told me that you don't know what's affected you or not because this is who you are, but I guess the question is when you think about your birth parents, Mm -hmm. knowing what you know about them, what happens in your head? Um, mystery. Uh, it's like a puzzle, and you find new pieces of it, and thinking about my birth parents, like you said, our parents worried about telling their kids something that, like, could affect them, like, if they were in danger or Mm -hmm. if this. Um, my mom told me that, and I didn't see, I didn't, it didn't make me feel any different about my birth parents. Um, I don't think parents should be worried about expressing that to their kids because it's just showing their kids another part of who they are. Mm -hmm. And by opening up to your kids on that, it makes them feel like, um, it doesn't, because if you show that your kids, that you're worried about that, it can make the kids worried. Mm. But if you say it in a way that you're not worried and it's okay, then the kids won't be worried. And I think you should grow, like, Explain to your kids while they grow up what their history is with their birth parents. Mm -hmm. So don't do it all at one moment, because it might be a big shocker. Mm -hmm. But as they grow up, just mention to it once or twice, like, this is your parents. And so it's not like a huge hit to them. Mm -hmm. And they kind of just live with it. And Mm -hmm. if you do it like that, I think it should go perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Um, If you tell them something bad that happened to your birth parents, I think they can deal with it greatly Mm -hmm. if you Um, do it in a subtle way. So how old were you when your mom told you your birth mom's name? Do you remember? Um, 
<laughs> so she, I don't think my mom ever told me my birth mom's name because I never asked and my mom forgot it, I think. But when I went through the safe, I found it and I don't exactly remember her um, name. And that kind of shows to how connected I am to my birth parents where I don't even know their names. But you have access to it. But I have access. Yeah. So that's nice to know. Like if I ever wanted to know their names, I can mm -hmm. easily access it. Mm -hmm. And But it's interesting because I actually haven't really thought about that until right now. Mm -hmm. Like what is her, what is her name? Because mm -hmm. I know my birth name. Mm -hmm. and, but I don't know their names. So um, I think the parents should tell if the kid asks, mm -hmm. if they know it. Mm -hmm. But um, you kind of should let the kid grow so when the kid wants to know you should be able to tell them because if you hold it back it's going to just build up inside of them right mystery mm -hmm. often creates internal cancers yes. right Little emotional yes. diseases yes. And, and not being able to have answers to questions yeah. causes kids to ruminate and wonder ponder and on their yes own. yeah mm -hmm. so we often hear from people who are adopted that they spend time as children, you, more as children than as adults, sort of daydreaming about who their birth parents might have been or okay. might be, didn't happen for you, it sounds like. Never. Never. Um, no, not once I ever daydreamed of what my parents were like. Um, I grew up in a very safe environment. I went to Water for most of my life, mm -hmm. and at that school I was very open and welcome, and I'm, everyone is... It's like a bubble in a way. Mm -hmm. Everyone is like kind and nice. Mm -hmm. So I never sat in class thinking about my birth parents because the only parent I ever thought about was my parents I have with me now mm -hmm. and not the ones that I don't even know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You're remarkably healthy and <laughs> articulate for a 16 year old. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I wonder, you know, we often look at nature versus nurture in mm -hmm. adoption, and we ask ourselves, you know, how much of who a child becomes as mm -hmm. an adult has to do with genetics, mm -hmm. you know, sort of predisposition. Yes. If we could meet your birth mom and birth dad, would we see a direct relationship yes. or a resemblance? Would we see habits or patterns or, you know, um, similarities? And how much of it has to do with the mom and dad, mm -hmm. specifically here the mom, because she spent more time with you who raised you. Yes. Do you look at your mom and see similarities? Do you have habits that she has? Um, definitely, yeah. yeah. Me and my mom uh, have the exact same humor. I don't know if that's a good thing, but we do. <laughs> uh -huh. And we do have a very similar, because I grew up not eating meat because I, that was um, nurture. Uh -huh. And now I don't eat certain types of meats uh -huh. because of that. Uh -huh. So I think um, me and mom have a lot of um, interesting traits, um, maybe too many. I don't know, but sometimes it's very, very, <laughs> very um, more na nurture than uh -huh. nature. Because I don't think I have or I could only think of um, nur or nature traits with my birth parents. Well, you wouldn't know, I guess, yeah. is the point, right? But yeah. the ones um, other than looks, I wouldn't know, mm -hmm. yeah. And I do look a lot like my mom. Right. So that actually made me not question my adoption even more mm -hmm. because she looked like my birth mom more than probably I could, my birth mom, because I do look a lot like her. Right, yes. and you have kind of a hoppa look too in a way, mm -hmm. right? Have you been, have people thought that maybe your dad was Asian? Have you gotten that from um, people or? I don't. I get like people ask me if I'm Asian, but no one asks about my parents. Mm -hmm. Very interestingly, they ask if um, I have certain type of Asian or my eyes mm -hmm. is what people um, ask me about. Yeah. But no one asks me about my parents being Asian. But they always ask um, about the eye color, like why, like, uh, like I think we were talking about this earlier. But people ask. Um, why is my eye color different from my mom's? Mm -hmm. But when I say I'm adopted, they don't think that. Mm -hmm. They think because we have different eye color, we're still not, ado I'm not adopted. Mm -hmm. I think that's very interesting how people miss the details. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people want to make sense of things. Yes. And people want to understand relationships. Mm -hmm. and they want to know uh, how you fit in with whoever you're with. Mm -hmm. yeah. So interesting. No one really thinks about being adopted. So when you say, or when people 
notice your and your mom's eye color different, like, oh, contacts or this, mm -hmm. but adoption is never one of the first things they um, go forward. Right. Yeah. You have been so fascinating to talk to, and this has been so interesting that we're oh. almost out of time, and I didn't even realize that oh, time wow. would go by so quickly. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Um, so in our final two minutes, okay. um, is there anything that we, we should have talked about that we didn't touch on that you'd like to talk about with regards to being adopted or growing up mm -hmm. with a single mom or, I don't know, anything at all that's important to you that you want to share with our audience? I think being adopted is a gift in a way. Um, you don't feel, I, don't, I know I said this many times, but I don't feel different from other people, but I know I am. And I love that feeling mm. of knowing that there's more to me because it's like a mystery. And I think people shouldn't uh, take adoption as a bad thing. I think there's so many kids out there who need parents and need adoption. And I think people should adopt because it helps the kid and it helps you because you're doing something good for the kid and yourself. Mm. And I think adoption is just great overall. I can't. I can't uh, place this in words. It's too mind-blowing in a way. And what I love about yeah. this is I didn't know that you were going to say that. When we invited you on as a guest, I had no idea what you would be talking about or yes. what you would say about <laughs> being adopted. So for the record, I think it's important to know that uh, this is not a, a staged conversation. Yes. You're, I didn't know you'd come on and advocate for adoption. It, it's an authentic response mm -hmm. to your own experience. Yes. Um, but you are the best person to talk about it because you've <laughs> lived it. Yeah, yeah. It's very, um, it's an interesting journey. It's, yeah. And I'm happy I have my mom here to support me. And even if um, my dad passed away, um, I think someone said, well, he's not your birth dad. And I don't, that I didn't get that because he's still my dad. He's your dad. So I didn't understand why someone would say that because even if I was adopted, he was the one who raised me. So you think of him as your dad? Yes. Then not. And now. I don't think of my mom or my dad as anyone different as my parents, mm. and I even could consider them as my birth parents in a way. Your real parents, as yes. we say. But yes. Well, with that lovely thought, yeah. we're going to have to end. Okay. But I can't thank you enough, William, thank you for, for being here. Me. Yeah. Thank you very much. This has been All About Adoption. My name is Christine Altwies, with thanks to Alelo Studios and our producer, Chris Castagnero. Until next time. <laughs>